so many mimosas to digs, guys. Yeah. So we, we're you, have just, to, you have to we're have mimosas gonna, to recover to, yeah. to combat the hangover from, New, from Year's New, Year's New Year's Eve. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Rebecca. I'm Lelia. And we are the Boozy Booksellers, and we made it. We survived. We it. It's 2017, y'all. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We get to wear crowns. Yes. So 2016 was rough, guys. But a lot of great books came out in 2016. And we're going to tell you about some of our favorites. Because, you know, we're going to go out with a positive note. <laughs> as opposed to a terrible note. Some of these we've talked about before in some of our earlier videos. But we just wanted to do some, uh, bring some, you know, have some mm -hmm. honors and give out to, to the best yeah. of on our opinion Superlatives. of the year. Superlatives. Superlatives. That was the note that I have Superlatives in my Superlatives was the word that I yeah. couldn't think of three days ago and still can't. So that's fun. Yay. Um, I'm going to start with my first choice, which is getting the, my award for best prehistorically set reimagining of a Jane Austen novel. <laughs> and it's going to go to, you guessed it, Ivory and Bone mm -hmm. by Julie Eshpal. Yay. Let's get a, there we go. Right there. It's a beautiful cover. <laughs> Yeah, That's a really cool all cover. the all the wonderful family drama of Pride and Prejudice, but also hunting mammoths. So you're welcome. That sounds amazing. I it want is. that movie. So my what's yours? My first superlative is the best, like lush historical novel featuring bejeweled gowns and opera singers. You should have worn your bejeweled. I know, gown. right? Oh. Mistake. That is The Queen of the Night by Alexander Chi. And this follows uh, Liliette Byrne, who is an opera singer in like 1870s Paris. And she is super famous and has tons of suitors who give her jewels that she throws in the trash. And, you know, because you're a boss and you can do that. Um, but she is approached to originate a role in an opera, which is a super big deal. But when they start explaining the plot of the opera, she realizes that it's her secret past. The story of her secret past that no one is supposed to know yes. about. So she has been betrayed, but by whom? Doo -doo. Yeah, I really love this book. It's lush and wonderful and you can sort of sink into it. So Queen of the Night by Alexander Chee. My next pick is for the This Is Why We Don't Do Cocaine Award for Brutal Honesty in a Memoir. And it's going to Sex Object by Jessica Valenti. Oh man. Yeah. Swollen nostrils and insomnia. Uh, no, thank you. But it really is, I mean, her her story of her life and just uh, talking about feminism is so uh, unapologetic and raw. I just, I mean, it was incredible. Uh, not an easy read, but really, really great. So, awesome. well done, Jessica. All right. Also, not an easy read. I think we're putting these in the middle of the video. Um, this is my uh, best fiery call to action which is uh the fire this time a new generation speaks about race edited by jesmyn ward so there's a bunch of different authors in here i think there's like 20 like 18 to 20 um authors speaking about race in america and it's you know talks about police brutality it talks about institutionalized racism it talks about the sort of really fraught history that has brought us to you know, where we are today and sort of where we go from here, um, which, you know, I think is really important going forward in this year. And I really loved it. So fire this time edited by Jesmyn Ward. Next, I'm going to give my 2016 character who doesn't have time for your nonsense award. Yeah. Which is going to go to hope of hope and red. She's the one, as you see here with the sword on the cover. <laughs> She has one goal, and it is revenge. And it is hitting she you with does not have sword. time for your banter or your romantic inclinations. She's like that driver on a road trip that's like, <laughs> okay, we're in the car, and we're not stopping till we get there. We're scheduling bathroom but breaks. The destination like, is vengeance. <laughs> vengeance or bust. So <laughs> oh, I didn't say the author. Oh, yeah, oh, well. you should say the author. I should, have, I should say the author. <laughs> Hope and Red by John Scavrin. My next book is also a collection of essays. I was sort of on a nonfiction kick this year, y'all. Um, but it is most hilarious voice while talking about both poverty, capitalism, cystitis, and Benedict Cumberbatch. And that is 
Manifesto by Catelyn Moran. Now, I adore Catelyn Moran. How, I, How to Be a Woman, her memoir, is one of my favorite books ever. And, and this is a collection of a bunch of her columns from the Times, the London Times. And, you know, as I said before, it covers a breadth of topics, but, you know, it digs into um, issues of today, but all in, her, in Catelyn Moran's very sort of funny, wise, um, you know, like, no nonsense kind of voice and it's really great and wonderful and I cackle. There's an essay on the evils of printers which I think we can all relate to. So Catelyn Moran, Miranda Festo, it's great. All of your your superlative titles are better than mine. I'm not good at this game. <laughs> I'm really into it. Okay, next up I have my award for most needlessly melodramatic almost yes. death scene. Which is going to go to Lane, and this is not a spoiler, it's in the first, like, two chapters. <laughs> Lane in The Angel's Share, book two of the Bourbon King series by J.R. Ward. Which you did talk about earlier I this year. I did talk about it earlier yeah. this year. It was one of my most, I was most excited for, and it was pretty great. How melodramatic is this? Oh my god, so he, scene. like, is doing the thing where he's, like, on the bridge, and he's not, like, contemplating jumping. He's just trying to get in the head of his father, who died previously and they had a very fraught relationship and then his girlfriend drives up sees him and it thinks he's gonna jump and startles him he falls <laughs> of course and in this moment of slow motion remembers what he once heard one of his friends tell him about the way that you can fall correctly from a great height into water that won't kill you oh, no. and he's like okay great i'm gonna cross my legs at the ankle so i don't break my anyway it was a whole thing and this is very well put together for having he... been startled off a bridge. Yeah. Oh my god, I So love that. if you're ever looking for that life skill, read some J.R. Ward. It could save your life one day. So my my next superlative, uh, it's best old-fashioned banana pants romantic magical realism with like A plus representation. When the Moon Was Ours by Anna Marie McLemore. And this book is beautiful. Like, I, when I say, like, old-fashioned, like, banana pants magical realism, like, we've got roses growing out of wrists and glass pumpkins and stained glass coffins in the middle of the woods, and it's just gorgeous. Like, it's gorgeously written. It's beautiful prose. And, you know, the two main characters are a trans-Pakistani boy and a Latina girl who grows roses out of her wrist. And it's just gorgeous. And warms my heart and it's beautiful and it's wonderful and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stroke it real quick that got inappropriate we're just gonna, gonna leave you two alone yeah, I'm, we're gonna put this down now my most creative analysis of the institution of marriage and its cultural impact goes to the graphic memoir something new by Lucy Nisley um she's an incredible graphic novelist I love her or graphic That's memoirist uh it is gorgeous yeah look at this look at that let's see if I yeah, can am I allowed to open it we'll yeah, see, yeah yeah like um, a couple... like copyright loss yeah um no <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's about her and her fiancés or now husbands planning their wedding and just the what wedding you know what that means in various cultures and the history and how they wanted to make it their own and all the pressures and the insanity and it's 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 really interesting I mean as someone that's not particularly interested in that theme she did a great job of kind of presenting it as um, you know something that's interesting for people who even if you're not getting married that's awesome. My next, my next superlative. Next up, we get whoa, something special for oh you. Oh my goodness, the oh. hockey game is on. I just heard. I'm like ingesting the Canadian. Gets no, right. okay, sorry. So my next book superlative is the most gorgeous memoir about plants that made me cry while listening to the audiobook, <laughs> and that goes to Lab Girl by Hope Jaron. So I did, I listened to this one audiobook from the library, but I then went out and purchased it because it is just stunning. You know, it, it's a memoir of her growing up in Minnesota and then becoming one of the few uh, female scientists in her field. I think she's a geo, geobiologist. Sure. It's, you know, about her, uh her experiences in science and being a woman in science and trying to get funding for your lab and her relationship with her lab partner and also like you know her own mental health struggles and sort of figuring her own life out and she narrates the audiobook and 
there are times when you can hear her voice breaking in the take that they used. And I just like waterworks opened in my eyes, but it's beautiful. And it taught me a lot about, you know, the natural world and trees and plants around me that you don't normally think about. So lab girl, hope Jaren, it's really great. Whew. Guys, this is the big one. This is the big one. My last the big award. One. That's what she said. I will give out the Louise Erdrich Panini Award for Substance and Entertainment, which I'm going to give to Monsters, a Love Story by Liz K. What does that even mean? Let me tell you about this award. Please. So in an interview uh, with, I think it was Entertainment Weekly, Louise Erdrich, when she was talking about, I think this was for uh, The Roundhouse, she was talking about how she wanted to make a book that was like a panini. And she needed to put a lot of melted cheese in it in order to get people to eat the spinach. And her point was, oh. she's talking about these real issues, you know, about, you know, um, rights and uh, legal, um, you know, uh, with like copyrights Native American. Stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. sorry. With um, right. Got and, it. And so she has this thriller storyline as the as the the melted cheese to get people to read it I that stuck with me and I was just thinking about that in relation to this book Monsters Love Story because it really you know I've talked about this before ad nauseum to anyone that will listen <laughs> about how it's it reads like a beach read but there's so many layers to it and you can just like the the themes that she touches on are incredible um, just talking about feminism and parenting and art and human relationships and Frankenstein. So it's, uh, I can't say enough about this book. I think everyone should read it. Also, there's a lot of cursing in it and it's great. That's awesome. So my last superlative um, of the year if for the uh, best feminist folkloric fantasy graphic novel about storytelling and the power of love and friendship goes to, that was beautiful. Nailed it. Goes to The 100 Nights of Hero by Isabel Greenberg, which I loved this graphic novel. It's sort of a riff on the 1001 Arabian Nights, um, but it's sort of in this fantasy world that is very similar to our own, but uses bits and pieces of our own history and our own mythology to sort of create something new. And it follows a woman named Cherry, who uh, has married a real jerk who makes a bet with his jerk face friend that his jerk face friend can't seduce his wife while he's away on a business trip and the jerk face friend is like yeah i can totally and then cherry overhears this and so she and her maid hero who she is actually in love with cook up this plan to sort of stave off that really gross nasty bet by telling these stories within stories within stories to just enrapture him and he forgets about it. So, and it's wonderful and it's got beautiful art. Like, Isabel Greenberg's style is really gorgeous. Um, like, look at that. It's really pretty. It's wonderful and it's a great yarn and has wonderful characters and, you know, ladies being wonderful and it's great. It's also really big. Like it's a, it's a good <laughs> it's huggable. <bad>. Like <laughs> it's a good huggable one. Yeah. So those are our um, sort of alternative book superlatives um, to some of the books that you know we might have talked about before on this channel. So we're really excited about 2017. There's lots of good books coming out, um, and we would love to know what you guys loved in 2016 and what you're looking forward to in 2017. Also, if you have any suggestions for you know beverages that we can consume while especially doing Especially if they're videos. book related. Oh yeah, especially if they're book related. Extra credit for that. Extra credit. <laughs> Assignment. <laughs> yeah, so happy new year. We promise we're not dead. We will be making more videos. Uh, and to uh, all the authors that we mentioned and all the other authors, thank you. Please keep writing awesome books because the world needs them. Yeah. And thanks for not getting mad at us for drunkenly yelling about your books. Yay! Bye guys! 2017! 2017! What?